Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about Swagger and how to integrate Swagger with your existing Play Framework Java project. So Swagger, as the web page says, is an, a tool to develop uh, APIs and Swagger can help you design and document your APIs at scale. That means that, that Swagger is a useful tool for developments to create a standardized way of documenting your APIs. It is also readable for humans and readable for machines, so everybody can uh, document their APIs in a useful way. So in this video we will cover a tutorial where we can show you how to integrate this tool to your existing Java Play project. We are going to use Swagger Core for the uh, integration specifically Java, well, Swagger Play, which you can find in this link that we will give you in the description of the video. We are going to use also Swagger UI to display the documentation that we are going to create automatically using Swagger Core. Also, we are going to use some Swagger Core annotations that we will show you how to use them later on the video. And finally, the documentation that we tell you before you can just jump into swagger.io where you can find all the resources tools and all the documentation for swagger so without further ado let's start with the tutorial so before we start we're just going to talk a little bit about the project it's a very simple project first thing that you want to do is include the libraries and dependencies from swagger So to do this, you have to go into the build.svt. Here you're going to include the, the, pen, the library dependencies of Swagger and Swagger UI. We uh, encourage you to use the, the version 2.7 because the Swagger Play uh, plugin works with this version of Play. And here you can check in this note which versions are available for this core. Once you have added the library dependencies on the SBT, you want to enable <laughs> the Swagger modules. So go to the application.com and make sure that you add the line play.modules.enable and then you add play.modules.swagger.swaggermodule. So the first thing you want to do is locate the controller or resources that you want Swagger to identify. This is going to be all the classes which contain methods that will be used as APIs or HTTP methods. So go on to the controller. In this case, we have all the queries on the query controller. So on top of your class, you're going to add the API annotation. This is going to include uh, some values that will affect all the methods that are inside this class. So you can add value to add a specific description of what the APIs inside do. We're going to include uh, public queries because that is what all the queries inside our class do but you can add your own values or summaries we're also going to include produces application JSON because all of the queries below are going to produce a JSON but if you use XML or another format you can also include it what we want to do next is locate every single one of the HTTP methods and add the API operation annotation. So before every single one of the methods, you add this annotation, and you will also describe the method with some values. Any values that are also included on the API above will be overwritten here. So this is for more specific values for this method. So you can include whether it consumes or produces a certain type of uh, format, such as JSON, XML, string. 
You can also add a value to have a sort of summary of the method. You can include if it's an HTTP post or get a method. You can add a type of response class, such as we have done here. We put publication.class because the response is going to be adjacent and its schema is going to come from the publication class. So once we have this, we also have to include the parameters from our query. You can do this in two methods. In the function that we have below, we have query, but it takes no arguments. So we're going to use implicit parameters. This means that our front end gave us the parameters and we're not explicitly uh, putting them on the method. So we're going to include the, the annotation API implicit params. Inside of this annotation, you're going to include as many parameters as you are using with the API implicit param. This annotation is going to include the name, the value, if it's required or not, the data type, the parent type. This is all going to describe what the param is. So as you can see, we are going to, uh, the API is going to consume a JSON. The JSON is going to be consumed as a data type of models.query11 uh, uh, class. This class is a class that we have made so that we can specify the schema of the JSON that is going to be consumed on this query. But if it's just a string, the, the parameter that you're using, you can put that as a data type or any of the data types that you're using. So in case it consumes a JSON, you have to create an API model as a class to, to create a schema for the swagger to include into the API as a parameter. To do this, we're going to create a new class and name it the same way that we named the data type on the API implicit params. So here we put query 11 pojo once we have created the class, in order for Swagger to identify that this is going to create a schema for one of the parameters, we're going to put the annotation API model. Inside of this class, each and every one of the uh, parameters that we want to include in the JSON have to include an annotation called API model property. So in this example, because our query only takes one parameter as inside of the JSON, we're only going to include one parameter in here as well, which is going to be the name of the publication. But if your parameter includes more values inside of the JSON, be sure to add them here as well. There are also other ways to put the parameters, such as with the annotation API param when you have the parameter inside of the method itself. So for example, in this method that is going to be an API, we have the parameter topic ID, which is inside of the method. So to make it easier, we're just going to include the annotation inside of this uh, parameter. For the parameter of topic ID, we add the API param annotation. This is going to be the topics ID and it is a required parameter. So we simply include it in front of the argument of the function and the Swagger library will identify it as a parameter for the API. So first you want to add a route that will take you to the JSON specification uh, documentation for the APIs. This is going to be very simple. You only need to put a GET request and the route that you want, uh, you can put it as swagger.json and then you're going to use the API help controller that comes with the Swagger library. Once you go into this route, you will be able to see the JSON documentation. The next route will enable you to go into the user interface documentation. You simply have to put the route that was given, see that it includes a file. The library from Swagger that uses the user interface will need a JSON as a consumable to produce the user interface. So we also have to include this file inside of the path. After you have done this, you can add extra configuration in your application.conf. 
In case your application is blocking out the user interface swagger request, be sure to disable the CSER filter so that you can make this, the request to the swagger user interface module. This is done by simply putting in the line that you can see that we have added play.filters.disabled and play.filters.csurf.csurf filter. This is going to disable it for a while. It's really good for testing, but try not to do it for development. You can also add other information for do your documentation, such as the API version, the Swagger title, the API info, such as name, contact, or license name. Simply put swagger.api.info and include .title, .name, .contact, or .license.name. In our case, we're only going to include the title, which is SOSA Publications API, and the API version, which is .3.0. And that's it. Those are all the examples that the, all the steps that you need to include Swagger into your application. We are going to compile it and just wait for the system to recognize all the dependencies. And after the compilation is complete, you can run your application in the browser and look to your uh, to the routes that you added here. So you can verify that your Swagger core integration is successful. Now we can go to the route localhost 9000 and just write the route that we wrote in in the route swagger.json and we should see how the swagger core creates the json for our api as we mentioned before this is human readable you can you can check out the structure if you read uh, each of the queries that were identified automatically by swagger the query 1 1 that was the previous query that we were modifying with swagger annotations we can see that it correctly identifies the summary the tags the description the operation what it consumes what it produces and what are, what are the parameters that we specify by the by the class that we just created before the query 1 1 pojo we can also see that there are some information that are shared by all the queries. The tag, which is publication queries, is in all of the queries, and also the produces application JSON. This is because we included this information on the API annotation at the top of the class, so it's going to affect all of the queries. The rest of the information was specified in API operation above each of the methods. We can also see that at the very top of the document, we have the information that we added in the end. So we have the title, which is the SOSA publication API, the version, which, which is 3.0, and you can add the contact name, license, whatever you want inside the application.com document. Now we can uh, also show you how the user interface Swagger works. We now you should uh, use the next route to locate the swagger ui so we write after the port 9000 we should go to docs as you wrote in the routes docs then slash swagger ui then index dot html and after the index you should pass a parameter called URL, including the base route uh, to your document. Therefore, it's the same that we were using for this document JSON that you are seeing in, in the display. So you should start completely with your HTTP method. Then you should add the rest of the URL. So as you can see swagger.json and you should see how the Swagger UI creates for you a very beautiful user interface API where you can see all the documentation that you wrote for each of the queries 
The, this includes the HTTP method, the, the route for each query, and a brief description that you wrote in using the annotations that we mentioned before. We can also see that this is not only good to check out the documentation of the query, but you can also test them yourself. So if you go into a get query, you can try it out. You can execute it. And it's going to create a curl, which will give you a response. So in here, the response body was successful and it contains all the topics that were queried by this API. This also works with uh, post methods. So we can try it out with, with this uh, query. Is if you see it, we can also try it out. You can give it an, a name as it specifies. You can give it a year. And when you try it out, it should give you an answer just as any of the APIs. So here is the answer. And furthermore, you can also uh, make use of the queries that have parameters inside of the route. So for example, this one we created using the annotation API param. So it contains a box in which you can write the param itself. So you can also try it out, but the parameter is going to be placed inside of this box. So this is going to be what it looks like. It contains all the information. And at the very bottom, you will also have all the models that you use. So for example, for each of the queries, we created a class so that we could give it a schema for the JSON of the parameters that it consumed for each of the queries. And here you can also check out some of the description of those uh, classes. So for example, in the query 1-2, we're going to use the name of the journal, year of the journal, and issue of the journal, which is why it's included in here. So this is the documentation in user interface. We also showed you the JSON. It's very simple to set up, especially for a project that is already running, but you can also start and uh, create your queries using Swagger. It's a great tool. As you update your your project, you can also have the API documentation updating itself, which is really great. And it also makes it easier to share and consume and uh, produce APIs because we have a standard in which we can use them and understand them. So that's why it's really great to use Swagger. So thank you very much. And we hope that you uh, learned how to integrate Swagger. All the links that you need for this tutorial are going to be included in the description of the video. Thank you everybody for listening to this tutorial. We hope that you enjoy it and uh, we, we are sure that it will be helpful for your future projects and an easy way to document all your APIs. Thank you very much.